popular math writer Martin Gardner once said, the men who radically altered history, the great scientists and mathematicians, are seldom mentioned if at all. People like Einstein, Newton, Pythagoras, Euclid, Euler, and even Descartes are known by many. However, there are many great people who are not known and yet have completely altered math as we know it. One of these unsung heroes is Sofia Kovalevskaya. Sofia Kovalevskaya was born January 15, 1850, to Yelvitsna. Fedorovna Schubert, a woman of German descent, and Vasily Korvin Kuvgrovsky, who was a lieutenant general of artillery in the Imperial Russian Army. Sophia was the second of three children, and this ended up greatly affecting her life. Her mother favored her older sister and was raised to be a lady of society. As a result, Sophia was raised using her father's calculus papers as her wallpaper. It grew even worse when five years later, her brother was born, who was favored even more greatly. Sophia showed a very high level of intelligence from a very young age. When her father was home, he decided to teach her math and science. After realizing Sophia's potential, her parents paid a private tutor to teach her calculus. It was at this time that she was introduced to nihilism by a friend. This philosophical view prompted her to eventually write the book, The Nihilist Girl, expressing her outlook. By the time she was 11, Sophia already had updated her calculus wallpaper with differential and integral analysis, and when she was 14, Sophia taught herself geometry. Because women were not allowed to go to the universities in Russia at this time, Sophia created a fictitious marriage with Vladimir Kovaleski. Because of this fictitious marriage, Sophia was able to go to the University of Berlin, where she studied under the famed professor Karl Weistras. Karl was also her tutor, but because she was a woman, he didn't take her very seriously. However, he eventually realized her skill and continued with her tutoring for the next four years. It was at the end of these four years that she wrote one of her most famous works on the theory of partial differences differential equations. To get her PhD, she went to the University of Göttingen, and in July of 1874, Sophia was given her PhD in mathematics. Despite her PhD, Sophia couldn't find work after college. As a result, she decided to return to her home, where she only wrote fiction, theater reviews, and science articles. Sophia tried to return to the field in 1880, but she still couldn't find work. She therefore decided to go to Berlin, but in Berlin, her husband committed suicide due to failed business ventures. Normally, this might discourage or sadden other young women, but for Sophia, it drove her into her work with more passion than ever. As a result, in 1883, Sophia received an invitation from another former student of Weistrass to lecture at the University of Stockholm. The interesting thing is that it was really supposed to be a temporary position, but her genius showed and she was offered a full position at the university. By the time she had been there for five years, she had already more than proved her value at the university. Because of this, she was given a tenure position at the university and appointed editor for a mathematics journal, and in 1885 she co-wrote a play called Struggle for Happiness. In 1888, she achieved her greatest personal triumph. She entered a paper titled, On the Rotation of a Solid Body About a Fixed Point, for a competition put on by the French Academy of Science. Originally, the prize was 3,000 francs, but when the judges read her paper, they thought it was so well done that the prize money was raised to 5,000 francs. She acknowledges this paper as her greatest work ever, and was able to produce this work despite her sister's death just prior to the writing. Also at this time, a new man entered Sofia's life, Maxim Kovalevsky, a relative of her late husband. Originally, he came to Stockholm for a series of lectures. There he met Sofia, and the two had a scandalous affair. Maxim insisted that Sophia had a if leave her work in order to find her new job and be a spouse. 
Sophia rejected his offer without a question of doubt, but yet she still mourned losing him. In the fall of 1889, she returned to Stockholm, continuing to struggle with this depression. She died of influenza on February 10, 1891, and the scientific world was devastated when she passed. Sophia was buried in Stockholm with a willy, white lily wreath hanging from her gravestone from her most cherished friend, Weistrass. Throughout her life, Sophia wrote 10 papers in mathematical physics, wrote several literary works, and pioneered the kochi kovalevskaya theorem, which to this day has influenced calculus. In addition to her impact in math, Sophia is known as one of the most important females of her time. Firstly, she was the first female editor for a science journal. Even more surprisingly, she was the first woman in Northern Europe to be appointed full professorship. Albeit she has benefited the world in countless ways, she is seldom recognized or appreciated. We hope that through this documentary, the next time you think of Einstein, Euler, Descartes, and Newton, you will also remember Sofia Kovalevskaya.